with Mr. Thomas. Vroom, vroom. Here we are with chapter number six, lesson number 11, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So first of all, what is meant by these three words? Well, displacement, if you have an object and it starts to move, it will be moving away from its starting position. So the displacement is the distance from the origin, from the starting point at time t. Displacement is a vector and it's really the distance with a direction. Velocity is how quickly your displacement changes. So it's the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. And the units you would use to measure that would be meters per second, or ms to the minus one. Again, velocity is a vector, and it's really your speed with a direction. But because you're looking at how quickly the displacement changes, we'll think rate of change. How quickly something changes, you can think about differentiation. So you could say that the velocity v would equal the rate of change of displacement. So you're differentiating displacement, which is dx, and that will be with respect to t. Acceleration is very similar. Again, you're thinking of rate of change, and it's how quickly you're changing your velocity. So you can say that the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. And again, that will be measured in meters per second per second, or m slash s squared, or ms to the minus 2. And it's really the rate at which an object changes its speed. It's how quickly its speed is changing, or its velocity. Again, because you are thinking of rate of change, you can think differentiation. So you can say that the acceleration equals, well, it's the rate of change of velocity. So you differentiate velocity, and again, it will be with respect to time. Let's try a couple of examples with that then. So example number one, a car is traveling along a straight road. The distance x meters traveled in t seconds is x equals 10 t minus five t squared. Find the velocity when t equals 0 0.5 seconds. So you're starting off with x equals 10 t minus 5 t squared. That is what the distance is going to be. To find the velocity, well remember the velocity is the rate of change of displacement, so you can differentiate. So we differentiate x, the distance, with respect to time. So you can say then, if you differentiate that, you will end up with 10 minus 10 t. However, we are asked to work out the velocity when t equals 0.5. So when t equals 0.5, we can replace t here with 0.5. So the velocity will be, it's the 10 minus 10t, so it's 10 minus 10 times 0.5, which will become 10 minus 5, which is obviously 5 meters per second. So that is what you would do for example 1. Example number two, woohoo! A car is traveling along a straight road, once again. Its velocity this time in t seconds is v equals 10 plus 6t squared minus t cubed. Find the acceleration when t equals 3. So here we're given a formula for the velocity and you want to find the acceleration. But remember, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So you can say that the acceleration equals well, you just differentiate velocity. So you differentiate velocity to dv, and on the other side you get t, so it's dv by dt. If you do that, if you differentiate this, you will end up with 12t minus 3t squared. That is going to be an expression for that, uh, but you are asked to find the acceleration when t equals 3. So once again, you say when t equals 3, and in here, you can replace t with 3. So the acceleration would be 12 times 3 minus 3 times 3 squared, which will work out to be 36 minus 27, which gives you 9 meters per second per second. Example number 3. Padoink. A model train runs on, a straight, runs on straight tracks. Its displacement, x meters from the signal at O, after t seconds is given by x equals 1 minus 4t plus t cubed, where t is obviously bigger than 0. Find, first of all, an expression for its velocity and acceleration at time t. Find its displacement velocity and acceleration at t equals 1. 
and find the time at which the velocity is 8 meters per second. So first of all, for part A, we have x equals 1, plus, uh, 1 minus 4t plus t cubed. We want to find an expression for the velocity. Again, think, how do you get from the displacement to the velocity? Well, if you've got a displacement, you want to go to velocity, you differentiate. So we differentiate x, so dx by, and on the other side we've got t's, so dx by dt. If you differentiate that, you end up with negative 4 plus 3t squared. Again, to get to the acceleration, how do you get to the acceleration? Well, if you know the velocity, you just differentiate. So you can say the acceleration would equal, and you differentiate velocity. So it's dv by dt. Differentiating this, you will end up with just 6t. So that is an expression for the velocity and the acceleration. For part b, you want to find the displacement velocity and acceleration when t equals 1. So you know if the time is 1 second, all you want to do is replace t with 1 for the displacement, the velocity, and the acceleration. So doing that then, that was the formula for displacement, and you want to replace t with 1. So you'd have 1 minus 4 times 1, plus 1 cubed, which will give you 1 take away 4 plus 1, which gives you negative 2 metres. Because you've got that negative, though, think about what the negative means. Well, it means, really, your distance will be going back the way. So it's 2 metres to the left of O, uh, which was the starting point. Your velocity... The velocity was this formula here, negative 4 plus 3t squared. Again, when t is 1, you can replace t with 1. So you'd have negative 4 plus 3 times 1 squared, which is negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1 meter per second. Again, think about what that means. Well, because it's the negative, it means it's going to be moving to the left on the x-axis. And the last part, you want the acceleration. So acceleration, the formula we had was just 6t, but if we know t is 1, you could say it's 6 times 1, which is obviously 6 metres per second per second. Last part then, part c. Calculate the time at which the velocity is 8 metres per second. So this was the formula we had for velocity. We came up with this in part a, but we know that velocity is 8 so what you could say from that is, well, if the velocity is 8, then this part here, the negative 4 plus 3t squared, will be equal to 8. So you can set that equal to 8. From there, I'd probably add 4 to both sides. So 3t squared is 12. Divide both sides by 3, and t squared would be 4. And obviously to get t, you can just square root that. Lots of you probably thinking that would be 2, and you would be right. But make sure that you can also that you also include the negative, so t would be positive or negative 2 seconds. However, if you think back to the question for um, right at the start, it was saying that um, t was bigger than 0. And obviously if t is bigger than 0, then t would just be 2 seconds. So even though you are dismissing the negative 2, you are best to put that in to begin with. So say it could be positive or negative, and then say why you are dismissing the negative. Don't just jump to 2 seconds. Try some of these questions, see how you get on. It is the Maths and Action Harbook, page 81, exercise 7. See how you get on working out uh, velocity and acceleration if you are given the displacement. Remember, the key is just to differentiate. Good luck, have fun. Vroom! Vroom!